Hey YouTube, this is Brian here. I'm going to be doing part three on my countdown of the top 100 musicians of all time uh, list. And if you missed the first two, uh, check them out. A lot of great names listed on that countdown. Uh, but we're going to get to some pretty big ones uh, in today's video too. Um, this series is obviously becoming a little longer than I thought it would. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of great names left to talk about. Uh, number 25 on this list, one of the biggest names in all of music, uh, let alone the list, is Michael Jackson, a man who is multi-talented and uh, irreplaceable, and uh, he was in music pretty much his whole life, and a lot of the personal issues that he uh, 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 contracted therein uh, from the abuse and mistreatment he received uh, younger in his life. Uh, probably resulted in the plastic surgery and the media scandals that um, uh, unfortunately led up to his kind of early death and his like early uh, 50s uh, you know he could have lived a lot longer if he hadn't been uh, uh, you know bothered by so many personal problems and uh, regardless of those superficial issues we're not here to talk about those today uh, Michael Jackson will always be uh, one of those artists who cannot be covered and cannot be replaced. You can't really think of anyone else uh, in Thriller, can you? Um, I don't think that Michael Jackson's uh, singular ability to dance and to choreograph his uh, stuff and to uh, sing, too. I mean, who else could do everything like that? Talk about having a range, you know, of abilities. Uh, uh, this man was uh, truly unique, I think. Um, let's uh, close this one video that's open in the background, sorry. Uh, number 26 on my list is going to be Stevie Ray Vaughan, uh, who's one of the few people I would put up there with Jimi Hendrix on a guitar platform. Uh, all you need to do to see his virtuosity in action is see the live version of Texas Flood from El Macombo. Uh, where he kind of reminds me almost of the Woodstock concert uh, in terms of how he plays behind his back effortlessly. And uh, I don't want to give away the whole thing because uh, it's worth watching. But uh, it's kind of fun, I think. One of the fun things about him is that uh, similar to like Errol Garner on piano, it's one of those guys who can go anywhere he wants on his respective instrument and also adds extended solos and augmentations. So you're kind of wondering, where will this guy who can go anywhere go next, you know? Uh, it's kind of intriguing to watch. Uh, number 27 on my list is Jimi Hendrix himself. Uh, he's probably uh, my favorite guitarist uh, and the man who inspired me on, uh, on guitar uh, with something to strive for, you know? With songs like uh, Voodoo Child and Purple Haze and Spanish Castle Magic. Uh, it gave me something uh, to dream towards when I was still playing on a, a, a broken classical guitar with only five strings on it that was all out of tune. And I was playing uh, one string solos of Iron Man and, and uh, Down by the Water, you know. I'm sorry, Smoke on the River. That is, uh, I was thinking of Down by the River by Neil Young that I was listening to earlier. Um, uh, nevertheless, uh, let's move on to number 28 on this list, uh, who's uh, The Doors. Um, they were only around for a couple of years, uh, fronted by the kind of haunting and mysterious vocals of Jim Morrison, who's almost kind of become like a folk figure, I think, uh, because he let on so little about his personal life and about who he really was on the inside. Uh, and he was around... Uh, uh, for such a short amount of time and they only had a couple of albums so uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of ambiguity there and they're one of music's great what-ifs uh, the doors uh, my favorite song from them is probably break on through to the other side okay number 29 on this list is going to be Jefferson Airplane uh, it's going to be a band that I think deserves to be here whether it's Airplane or Starship and uh, in any of their lineup change incarnations throughout the years um, they were primarily fronted by the 
vocals of Grace Slick and Marty Ballin. Uh, awesome vocal harmonies. Grace Slick has such a beautiful voice. Um, I frankly uh, don't just love their hits. I mean, I love them too, but I also love songs like Rejoice and Lather. And of course, their work from Red Octopus was fantastic, you know. Uh, their work from Surrealistic Fellow. Uh, any formation of this band, uh, I think, is worth listening to. Okay, let's get to number 30. Uh, Santana, uh, driven, of course, by Carlos Santana on guitar. I always think of the Woodstock performance uh, from 1969 of... Uh, Soul Sacrifice with the six and a half minute extended drum solo by Michael Shreve, uh, who was then at that time only like 18 or 19 years old. Uh, and he was completely wasted too at the time. Um, but it looks like Santana and pretty much everybody in attendance was as well. So, uh, you know, I guess I'll give him a break there. He cut an awesome solo anyways. Uh, they also had a great so. Uh, uh, concert performance of uh, Evil Ways at that show and I also remember them from that time for uh, Black Magic Woman Santana it's worth mentioning has stayed uh, relevant over the years uh, over the pop charts with his uh, uh, duo performances with people like uh, Rob Thomas and on the song Maria Maria too uh, he's um, slowed down probably over the years but you know he's getting into his 70s so uh cut the man a break you know uh number 31 on here is steely dan uh kind of a jazz rock band i think they have witty lyrics and they have a lot of different types of instruments that you don't always hear in rock uh in this uh in this type of genre you don't always hear like indian influences or jazz influences you know um steely dan i think was one of those bands that uh, didn't have a whole lot of duds in their catalog they were worth uh, uh listening to an album without really skipping through and ending up only having listened to 10 minutes of music you know uh my favorite uh song by them is probably reeling in the years um yeah, let's move on to the next entry on our list, fronted by the awesome vocals of Eric Burden, The Animals, uh, 60s rock band, most famous uh, for House of the Rising Sun, uh, though Eric Burden later went on to perform with the band War, and uh, I think that his vocals were one of the best vocals, uh, sorry, blues voices, that is, of the era, and uh, he also did a great performance of Tobacco Road, that's worth checking out. Uh, let's get to number 33 on this list, which is going to be Sublime, uh, one of the best bands of the 90s, bar none, uh, fronted by Brad Knowles, uh, who unfortunately, like many artists of that era, like Kurt Cobain and like Shannon Hoon and, and uh, uh, you know, Mike Starr, a lot of people, I think, uh, from that era died uh, young. You know, young, much younger than they should have, if not in their 20s, then way earlier on uh, than um, the average lifespan, you know. And I think that uh, um, it's also kind of like uh, The Doors earlier. It's one of those what ifs. Um, you know, this band was so uh, multi genre, they incorporated elements of reggae, of rock, almost of rap in a sense, I think. Um, and of uh, alternative rock, of course. Uh, and uh, some of my favorite songs by them are Santeria, Wrong Way, Pawn Shop. And uh, I think also uh, they did a great uh, version of Summertime and Living's Easy. Um, that was really different from any version that I'd uh, heard previously, like by Doc Watson or more traditional musicians, you know. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm not really into ska generally that much, but Sublime is probably the only uh, uh, band in the genre that I listen to a whole lot, you know. Uh, they inspired me to expand my taste, um, which is a factor for being on this list, I think, uh, considering it's a favorites list. Number 34 on here is... Uh, 
kind of cult guitarist John Fahey. He's not that famous, I don't think, uh, but the intricacy of his guitar work, uh, uh, how he uh, played finger style, but it's almost like he assigned several of his fingers to several guitar strings, and, and it sounds kind of resultingly like Art Tatum in the sense that it's almost layered. There's almost like several people playing at once, and uh, it's almost like a musical lasagna, you know? You know, you hear... Uh, just listen to Red Pony, uh, his live performance from 1969. Uh, it's one of those uh, artists, I think, that uh, tailed off a little over the years, uh, probably due to his issues with alcoholism. Um, he didn't die as a young man by any means. He lived in his, uh, I think, his early 70s. Um, but at the same time, uh, there isn't a whole lot of, like, John Fahey work, I don't think, from the 80s or from the 90s. Uh, it's mostly late 60s, early 70s kind of stuff. Uh, another one of my favorite songs from him, uh, also written as a young man, uh, coincidentally, is uh, uh, Sligo River Blues, which is... Uh, John Fahey is an instrumental artist, if I didn't mention that previously. Um... But yeah, it's it's kind of like a you know Chet Atkins or or Django Reinhardt in the sense that uh, it's almost like you're listening to an extended guitar solo. His songs resultingly aren't usually that long, um, but I think uh, I think they bear their own kind of unique multi-layered element to them and their own complexity through the incorporation of like. He has an alternate uh, bass line that he picks with his thumb while at the same time uh, playing fingerstyle across all the strings and kind of rotating his picking pattern and using unique chord voicings. Uh, I think that uh, John Fahey was probably one of the most recognizable acoustic guitar players uh, that I've to this day come across. Number 35 on my list. Is going to be Laura Nero. Uh, she peaked in fame in the late 60s, early 70s. Um, I think that my favorite song from her is probably Stone Soul Picnic. Uh, Laura Nero had such a unique voice. And um, yeah, I think that uh, my favorite uh, album from her came actually later in life when she was playing uh, at a piano. And uh, she played a lot of kind of sad covers on that album. Uh, yeah, let's get to number 36, which is Quicksilver Messenger Service, um, fronted by Dino Valente. Uh, and uh, I love their performance at, uh, at uh, Winterland. I think it was from like 75 or 76. Um, they have excellent songs such as Fresh Air and uh, Who Do You Love? Um, that song is like 25 minutes long, their version of it. It's almost like I'm listening to something by Iron Butterfly, you know? Um, but nevertheless, I, I don't think anyone had that kind of connection with the crowd, uh, like Dino Valente did in a live show. And, uh, they also did the song, uh, What About Me, which was another, uh, classic, you know? Uh, I think I'm probably going to stop here because, uh, we're at 13 and a half minutes. Uh, but thank you for watching, and I appreciate you following this list. Uh, respond with your own, and uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow probably.